So the squint to square um, got changed to uh, what I think does look a lot better, a uh, bowl window. And you can see the setting out was done between the studs, so it's that line going through. Find the center, squared off that. Down here, it's got to my striking point, which I put a nail in there, just to strike the arc. And that should now just be roughly in line with the steel up there, but it's all calculated because obviously the steel up there has still got a lot for um, cladding and brick stops to go on as well, so that's all going to come out probably 100 mil or so. Um, there we go, so just got another uh, 140 block to go on top of these, uh, and then I will sort the bond out across the top of that. Uh, a bit of cavity fill, damp courses on, and then we will be up to the same as we are down there. Uh, just a little reminder, we've got the vent there that goes in to the fireplace. Um, still got a sort of that pier out, obviously we'll do that when we start running through. Uh, as mentioned before, we've got our windows marked out exactly. And also, just to make sure that we get the right height, because obviously these are all been put in for um, uh, metric size, but we're imperial, so obviously the gauge doesn't work. So you can just see here on the profiles we just mark the window heights so we know exactly what height the sill will be at. Right let's get these down. Okay so this bay is now uh, in place ready for like, the damp courses. Uh, well I've got one course of face work to go around which I'm now going to do. So what I've done is I've gone back to my centre point brought it through and I've marked the centre of the bay so I'll make sure that whatever happens that is going to be the centre of a joint, the centre of a stretcher or centre of a header so I've got three options to play around with there so I'm going to run the brickwork round but you can see when we set it out originally with a different bay it didn't really matter when it was a square um, because these corners were hidden so it wasn't too much of a problem but now they're more on show because obviously we've opened them up to be like obtuse corners. Um, I'm going to have to be a little bit clever if I can. And because I want to make sure obviously I finish right here. Which means these two corners aren't going to be quite right. But we have got cobbles underneath this bay. And we've got cobbles in this panel. And we've got cobbles around that window. So we've got block bonding to go both sides. So... Regardless of um, how the um, bond is there, I've got to make sure that the two of them mirrors both sides. So um, that may take a little bit of um, thinking. So I'm going to start off, obviously, by doing dry bond round. And then I'll have a think about how that's going to look in relation to this one. And uh, do whatever I need to do. Then I will lay this course. And that's ready for damp course then. So a little bit of on this setting out. So when we have any curved brickwork, uh, a lot of people, well, you would see uh, headers going around because obviously uh, you've got a smaller distance on each one, so it means you can bend the wall around uh, a lot easier. Now, there is a rule, and that is if um, the radius is under two meters, then you can't use stretches because it will just go a little bit too jutty. Um, we are just over two meters, so theoretically, we should be able to do Flemish bond because we are uh, not just stretches, we're going to have stretches with headers, so the headers will be able to bend around a little bit quicker as well. So I'll do it out dry first and have a little uh, think to see if that's alright. So to keep that 
same as that, albeit just a, a slight trim on that one on the other end. As it comes round, because obviously you've got a mirror both sides, I get a broken bond in the middle. So this is kind of suggested to me that I should do this all in headers and then that way um, any broken bond in the middle um, is completely disguised. So I'll take the stretches out now, run them all around the headers and see what that looks like. There's my centre and headers work nicely. I've had to spin one there and spin one just over there just to keep the joints a little bit tighter. They're only about a fraction bigger when they're cut like that. So you can just see here obviously because of this bond and that bond that side, um, when it was like a square bay or a squint bay, it didn't make a great deal of difference. But now we've got this, this kind of like just opened this up rather than being sort of like proper hidden. Um, they're now both on show. So obviously governed by what I set out before, um, it's not too bad. I've just had to trim this one a little bit more than that one. But we're right in the centre and they work round just by spinning one either side. Uh, where is it just there? Uh, just to even them out, but to keep the joints nice and 8mm. And uh, I will have these on this course. Cut a little bit bigger, obviously. But uh, and then I'll block bond, block bond those, and um, for the stone being this side and the stone around the bay, so I'll have like two three quarters and the same that side as well. But that I think is the the best uh, we can get that to look.